true. <laughs> right side. Okay. So Caleb today will be giving a speech titled Technology and the Lies That It Is Communicating to Us. Dun, dun, dun. And are we ready? Okay. You can start when you, whenever you want. Okay. Good morning. I'm privileged to be here talking to you about technology and communication. Technology is a wonderful and beautiful thing. It allows us to be connected to millions of people across the globe almost instantaneously with the press of a button or the tap of a screen. Technology has given us a platform on which we are able to share ideas with a much larger audience than was ever possible before. People are able to be heard and voice their opinions. It's either if you can go on the internet and watch the YouTube tutorial and learn how to fix your car in a matter of moments. With the rise of technology, there's also been the rise of sci-fi movies where technology and AI systems, automated intelligence, are taking over the globe. And I almost want to ask, is there any legitimacy to this claim? What I'm here to talk to you about is not necessarily a violent robotic overflow or one where an AI system is mathematically deciding the value of a human life, but rather one where we are so consumed with what is fed to us that we are unable to filter reality from what is fiction. So in speaking of that, one of the ways I believe this is happening is through social media. So who all has a social media account? I know I myself have multiple. I have an Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. And here's my Instagram. And I'm actually going to talk about a few pictures specifically on here. Yeah, so go ahead and follow me if you want. <laughs> just, just kidding. Um, but I'm going to talk about a few pictures on here in just a few moments. But this is my Instagram account. Um, I want to point out a study done by Baylor University that said that on average, college students will spend eight to ten hours a day on their cell phone. And at first, I was like, "There's no way. Like, I don't. There's no way I spend that much time on my phone." And then after watching myself over about three days, I was like, "Wow, I am always on my phone." Like, I was amazed. I was like, "I'm surprised it's not actually heart higher." And so, really, this caused me to kind of examine what kind of effect that this amount of usage can have on a person, and what content is being communicated. And so what I want to do is give you three ways that what others communicating through technology may not necessarily be true, how it may be deceiving. Because I believe that if students are aware of the lies that technology is capable of communicating, then they will be better able to see through them and not believe them. The first way that social media can deceive us is that it causes us to compare rather than be content. We believe a lie that our life is not as exciting as others based on the quality of our Instagram rather than the quality of our lives. So when we're scrolling through accounts, we're consistently comparing and judging other people's. And two things happen. Either we, A, get a false sense of despair and depression because we think, oh, their life is way cooler than mine. Or B, we get a false sense of pride and righteousness because we think, oh, my Instagram is way cooler than theirs. Like, I do way more exciting things. So what this results in is we end up changing ourselves and we do things for the purpose and intent of making our lives look better. A perfect example of this is last night I was skating down Michigan Avenue and I was Snapchatting the whole thing and it was fun. But I found myself Snapchatting and focusing more on what I was sharing specifically than who I was with and the enjoyment and the sheer enjoyment of doing that. And I believe this is kind of a perfect example of how it causes us to compare and what comparing can lead to. The next thing I believe social media causes us to do is it causes us to post the best us rather than the real us. Uh, and this is because we believe the lie that people won't accept the real us, that they're only going to accept the touched up perfect version of our lives. Oftentimes before I post, I'll get anxiety of when I'm going to post on social media. And then when I do, it's like almost a social drug as I see all the people start liking my pictures. It's like, oh, it's like instant satisf satisfaction. And it's really an unhealthy habit and horrible. Um, so what I want to do is give you an example of something that I posted on Instagram. I'm going to talk about this specific picture right here. So here's this picture. It looks beautiful. They got the perfect sun rays, all the purple, the houses are all lit up. But this picture is a lie. This picture is not reality. It looks as if this was taken around sunset, but that's the real picture. There's no purple really in the sky at all. This is early morning. All these houses are in the shadows. This is what I really saw. And this is what I posted on my Instagram. And I believe this is a really good metaphor for what so many of us do with our lives. We post a perfect, touched up version of our lives, and this is what it is. In reality, this is what our lives really look like. And oftentimes, we don't realize that others are doing this. We see other people's pictures, and we want to be like them. We want to match what they're doing, but we're never going to be able to live up to this because this is fake. Here's another picture. So this is a picture my friend took, and it looks pretty incredible, I'm not going to lie. Um, I was with them, and then we went through editing it together. And this sun, 
is not here. There, there's no sunshine right there. This is a cloud line right here, and the sun was like probably about here. Yeah. It wasn't like even close to being at this point. But what happened is we just painted exposure in here and painted light and made it kind of blend in and look really fancy and cool. But also, there's a brick wall right here, and the sunshine can't go through that brick wall. But you would never know that. But this, so this is a perfect example of what we are fed on Instagram and social media versus what is reality. So in speaking of that, social media allows us to live in these false realities. And this is because we believe that the lie that our identity is what we post right, and who we create ourselves to be rather than our identities in Christ. We only post the most exciting picture and we almost create a persona for ourselves. We create a mask behind which we're able to hide behind. If I am consistently posting pictures of me skating or me exploring, what are you going to think I'm always doing? I'm always exploring and skating. Then the reality is maybe 2% of the week that I'm actually doing something this exciting. But I'm always posting that, so it, may, it gives off the idea that this is my life. Um, this is a direct contradiction between what the Bible says. Colossians 2, 9 through 10, it says, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled with him, who is the head of all rule and authority. Our identity is in Christ and Christ alone, not the quality of our Instagram, not the quality of our social media. So in review, while technology is a beautiful thing, it should be utilized to share the gospel. And it should be utilized to post who we really are. So I challenge you to question, am I, am I lying to others? Am I deceiving? Or am I posting for the sheer to share the moment? I'm just, I just want to share with you one more picture that kind of helps drive home the metaphor that I'm making. So this is a picture on my Instagram. I took it when I was a freshman, like second week, second week of school. It looks sort of like a really cool picture. And it almost paints me to be like this awesome skater. But I want to show you the video of how I took this picture, and it's actually kind of hysterical. Huh. <laughs> so here's the video, and this is me and my friend out at Adler's Planetarium, the second week of school, and this is how I got this picture. Yeah. <laughs> huh. You see the difference between this picture right here and this? It's, it's wow. night and day. Wow. <laughs> so next time you're on social media, have a filter and realize that what you're seeing probably isn't reality. And in conclusion, I believe the only real way that I can end, class, end this speech is by going before God and asking for prayer. Because I know that this is something that I deeply struggle with, finding my identity in what I post and finding my identity in what I think others post. And I'm sure that's a, probably a struggle for a lot of us. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to pray for us for just a second. Dear Heavenly Father, I just am so thankful that we are able to communicate with others through social media and share our views and ideas, God. But I just pray that you help us to realize that our identity is not in the quality of our Instagram or the quality of our social media, but our identity is in the quality of our relationship with you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ I pray, amen. 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 Okay, feedback. So good. Um, the... The visual like representations of showing like the picture, what it was before and what mm -hmm. it was after, and the picture in the video, super effective. Because I think all of us with we all edit our pictures, we all do this stuff, and so we all know. But having that like clearly and being able to see it mm -hmm. in progress, see what you're talking about, that was good. Mm -hmm. The points like that you had the three like don't be your, or social media yeah. makes your best you, not your real you. Those were really good. Mm -hmm. And also just kind of the vulnerability aspect and showing from your own life rather yeah. than just talking about it. That was awesome. Thanks, Ben. It's really relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Very applicable. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, this is such a good topic in our time. And you were very focused in your outline. You had it super well prepared. Thank you. So it was, yeah. it was, it was great. Do you mind? Do you mind me asking?